So here it is. Would you have believed that you'd reach a point in American history where the great General Motors would be taken over by the U.S. government and busted out as though the mafia took it over? I have to reiterate again, what Obama is doing is exactly what was done to the sporting goods store in that segment of The Sopranos. Now, those of you who don't watch it have to know what it is. The Sopranos on HBO. One of the segments a few years ago, in it, there was a man who owned a very large sporting goods store who was a degenerate gambler. And he gets involved in a very big gambling game with Soprano, who's his friend from the neighborhood. And he says, look, I don't want you to come in here, John, because you're going to get hurt. He says, no, no, I have to. have." So he goes in there and he gambles and he loses a lot of money. Then they put him into the vigorous business where he's paying 13% a week or whatever. I don't know what it is on the principal, which means he can never get out of debt. So before long, this gang moves into his store. He's now basically working for them. They're selling out. They're stealing the, the sunglasses. Uh, you name it. They're taking. They're ordering stuff on his credit and taking it out of the store and selling it on the street. Then eventually they're buying airline tickets on his credit, first class tickets, whole blocks of them, giving them to friends and selling them at a reduced rate. Until eventually the store is emptied out. The man who had owned it is now sleeping in a tent in the store because he's ashamed to go home. And the store is busted out. And he says to Tony Soprano at the end, he says, why'd you do this to me, Tony? And Tony looks at him, he says, because that's my business. That's what I do for a living. Now, if, if you don't see that this administration is exactly like Tony Soprano in a different uh, face, but it's a gangster-like regime that's running America. They rewarded the gangsters on Wall Street. Every company on Wall Street that should have been bankrupted was saved. And every company on Wall Street that shouldn't have been bankrupt went out of business. Do you understand what went on? It was the greatest thievery in American history. But that's not enough for a gang. Don't you understand that? They get so greedy with the amount of money they've robbed that they want more. They get so greedy with the power they've aggrandized that they want more power. You take a low-life bum like Bonnie Frank, a tenth-rate... A tenth-rate stooge of the lowest order. And you get a man like this suddenly in charge of financial services in America. A man who's never, ever made a dime in his life. A man who's never met a payroll. You take a low-life bum like Barney Frank and you give him this much power. What do you think he's going to do with it? That low-life criminal bum is going to try and get more power. That's exactly why General Motors is bankrupt today. That is my soliloquy on the death of a great, great, great enterprise, it may as well be the death of America itself. Obama has put a knife in the heart of America's, one of America's greatest corporations. Do you believe that you'd actually wake up to see this day? Can you believe it? It would be as though you wake up one day and you, you hear that the U.S. military is now out of business because it went bankrupt and the, uh, the uh, U.S. government has asked the Chinese government to step in and run the U.S. military because they're no longer able to run it. You say, ah, come on, that's crazy. That could never happen. Anything can happen under this regime. Anything can happen under this regime. Anything can happen under this regime. This man, Obama, is a dictator. This man, Obama, is a dangerous dictator, in my opinion. This man, Obama, must be called out for what he is and what he is doing. Now you understand why Michael Savage has been targeted by his friends in the socialist government of England. Savage. Today I had to do an early interview. It went well, and um, she asked me a question. Well, we'll play it tomorrow, the whole interview. It's actually going to air tonight, midnight um uh, actually, 8 a.m. British time tomorrow morning on a morning show. And it'll run it tomorrow on the Savage Nation. You'll judge for yourself. Because this is a huge story. Four articles came out over the weekend about, you know, my case to set my record clear and uh, my name, to free, you know, clear up my name in England and all of that. She asked me at the end the funny question, the interview on BBC. She said, would you consider coming to England? I said, yes, when my name is cleared. Uh, and the conservative government is swept in, and they invite me to give a speech before Parliament, I'll be happy to. And then, you know, I thought about something. I, I, most people in America and in England don't even know the following factoid about Michael Savage, and it's very important, and it just dawned on me today. 
all the years that I was a, a, a plant collector, and I was a plant collector for years, I don't mean like Obama, that kind of plant collector. He collects plants and sells them to China or destroys them. I'm talking about plants, you know, living plants, not factories. Uh, all those years I collected plants, medicinal plants, for posterity and saved them in herbarium specimens. One of my collections is in the Kew Gardens in England. I have an entire collection of rare specimens housed in England. It dawned on me just today, and I, I don't even think that they knew that in the BBC, because you don't even know it, is that I have them all. It's a very important point to scientists, but I wouldn't expect it to resonate with people who watch uh, American Idol and look at girls with lip balm and short skirts on Fox News. 1-800-449-8255, Michael, Los Angeles. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Michael, uh, I just think that, you, that you, you're upset about uh, Barack Obama because uh, Barack Obama, and for people like you, he cares about people that make less than $250,000 a year. You're a fat cat, you make millions a year, and you could give a care about the average American. Well, hold on, a... let's, let's slow down. How much money have, did you give away last year? How much money did I give away last year? Yeah, it's a pretty clear question. How much did you give away out of your own pocket last year? I gave, I gave uh, you know, I give it Christmas, and I give it other times, and I help. Oh, well, I gave away more than you earned last year, okay, to charity. That's number one. Number two, did I take the money from you? Buddy? The money that I earned, did I take it from you? Yeah, what charity did you give it to? Uh, one, some conservative group that's going to, you know, distort the facts about... Uh, about well, no, no, you're wrong, putz. Putz, you're wrong. I'm soon going to post all the charities that I give money to, so little men like you can learn... The garbage that comes out of your mouth is just just garbage. I am so sick and tired of losers like you telling people like me who struggled all their lives to achieve something that I took it off your back. I took nothing from you. The fact of the matter is you can't make it on your own, so you want Big Brother to steal it from men like me. Jackie Smith, hooray. Hooray to Jackie Smith. Well, that's right, because you're a little Nazi. You're a little Nazi who wants a gun. What do you do for a living, big man? So hard, and you, and, and you're... Hey, Mi hey, Michael, big man, what do you do for a living? What do I do? I do. I work in sales. You work in sales? What do you sell, Michael? What company do you work for? Who built that company that you work for, Michael? You didn't build it. You talk like a schmuck who doesn't even know the first thing about capitalism. Of course a schmuck like you wants socialism, because you'll never amount to anything without a government giving it to you. You're just a pup of the right wing. Yeah, right, 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 Michael. Hey, Michael, have you, have you ever met a payroll, Michael? Yes, I have. No, you never met a payroll. You know you never have. And you know you never gave a dime to charity. Well, I had a construction company. You own nothing, you loser, you. You own nothing, you jealous loser. Virginia Lisa, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Michael Savage, you are brilliant, and I can tell you this, that I can't hold the match that lights the candle to you, so I can't talk politics with you, but what I can do is I can tell you how pissed off I am as one little person in this country for having to foot the bill of some jackass in Washington that wants to take his wife out to dinner and a show. But wait a minute now, Obama's a man of the little, of the little people. He needed Air Force One to take him to a Broadway show. He needed, to sh he needed to show Broadway to his wife. So far in debt, all I need is to take him out to dinner with his wife. And you know what? I want to know, I want him to know that the last time that I Lisa, went out... now, Lisa, Lisa, please, this is the first couple. And they need to step out. And they, they need to go out and have a good time because they're under so much pressure busting, busting out America's corporations. That's right. And how many times has she gone up to New York in these private planes and spent more of my tax dollars to cut freaking ribbons on the museum? Give me a I break. really, you know what? I have nothing to say about that. I, I'm not a fan of the Obamas. I think they're imposters, the both of them. I think that this is a throne election from the beginning. And I blame the Republicans for it. If you think that I don't, you're mistaken. George Bush greased the skids for Obama to become president. I warned you six months before Bush was out of office. I warned you repeatedly that you ain't seen nothing yet. And unfortunately, I was right. 
George Bush took the nation down, broke the economy, was spending like a madman. And I was saying it a year and a year and a half ago. I said he's a fiscal socialist. Remember, I called Bush a fiscal socialist. Many of you attacked me for it. I warned you what was going to happen. I told you it was an insupportable government. What he was doing was unsupportable. It could not hold. And so at the end of the road, look what we have. We have an imposter, a social worker from Chicago who has never met a payroll in his life, who has taken a $1 trillion debt and run it into a $3 trillion debt in one year. We have a dollar that fundamentally is being propped up that's a false dollar, a dollar that has almost no value. It has no standard whatsoever other than the military. And it's thank God that we even have a military. Unfortunately, the military isn't able to do the job it was set to do. I'll be right back. I miss American pie. Drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. Them good old boys were drinking whiskey and rye. Singing, this'll be the day that I die. This'll be the day that I die. 